convicted of murder. I was in shock and it came back guilty. One unreliable witness. Even lying the tubes. There was no other evidence that linked her to this death. Nothing. A dying son's dream. She'll get out eventually and I'll be at her home. And we'll do the things that we did last time. We all know that she, she didn't do it. Hello, I'm Todd Lamaran. Tonight on APTN Investigates, every once in a while a journalist will hear a story that is almost unbelievable. It was from a relative of Connie Oakes, a Cree woman from the Nikonit First Nation in Saskatchewan. She told Jorge Barrera that Oakes was in big trouble in Medicine Hat, Alberta for a crime she says she didn't commit. That an accused says they're innocent is not surprising. But what little evidence the Medicine Hat Police and the Crown had on her is. Jorge started following Connie Oakes's quest for innocence more than two years ago. He has conducted a number of interviews that have never seen the light of day until now. The cypress hills and sky are now the walls of Connie Oakes' world. Not long ago, it was razor wire and concrete. This is her journey. From here to here. And this story begins with a woman named Wendy Scott. You've been lying for two weeks. Two weeks straight. Let me ask you, do you like attention? I've lied my whole life pretty much. The long weekend turned tragic Sunday morning when police were called to the Crestwood Trailer Park. Upon arrival, they found the body of medicine hat man Casey Donovan Armstrong. Local police continue to investigate what could be the city's first homicide of the year. Officials say they have several leads and maintain this is an isolated incident. There is no ev evidence at all to suggest that the community has, uh, has any uh, uh, need to fear. Uh, in medicine hat's not a huge community. It's huge news, and so there's huge pressure on the municipal police force. This was a murder that was outstanding for, for several months. I was the um, file commander, so I oversaw the investigation. We had a person of interest list of several people, and we noticed some discrepancies in, uh, in uh, specifically Wendy Herman's statement. So we had that analyzed, and uh, we believed at that time that you know, she was the she was lying in her statement, so we brought her back in for uh, re-interviews. I believe there's a few of them, and during one of those, she she confessed to the to the homicide. Police interrogation tapes of Wendy Scott obtained by APTN show a woman who is confused, who tells police that she can never keep her story straight. Every time I get my things mixed up in my own head, and that's why that's why I've been in special needs because I get things mixed up in my own head. I can think one weekend I was doing this and one weekend I was doing it and getting them all mixed up. I met her, oh my goodness, uh, once and uh, we actually went to go make a buy from her. And buy for what? Buy, buy some crack from her. I actually didn't have any money so she actually, she actually gave me a couple pieces for free. Oak says she allowed Wendy Scott to live with her around the time of the murder as a favor for a friend. Wendy was crucial to the case against Connie because it was the only evidence. Wendy's evidence was the only evidence that linked Connie to this death. There was no other evidence that linked her to this death. Nothing. In January of 2012, Medicine Hat police investigators traveled to Edmonton where Oakes was serving time for armed robbery. They were asking questions about the murder. I said, yeah, I knew Casey, that he's, he's my friend, he was a friend. And I explained to them that uh, Casey's uh, got a big heart, was an open door heart. As the interview progressed, they were saying, uh, just fess up to it, just fess up to it. And there too, I was adamant. I'm not uh, admitting to, um, I'm not admitting to shit that I didn't do. She phoned right away, picked it up, and she told me, you know what, I'm charged with murder. She told me, huh? What I told her, you know, I couldn't believe what she was saying to me, huh? But she said I didn't do it. Maybe crazy, but I didn't do it, she said. 
The trial of Connie Oakes began in Medicine Hat, Alberta in November of 2013 in front of a jury of five men and seven women. None were First Nation. The Crown star witness is Wendy Scott. Uh, Ms. Scott entered a, a fairly early guilty plea, was sentenced to 10 years. Uh, the preliminary hearing for, for Ms. Oakes was for first degree murder. Um, that was knocked down to second degree. Uh, the one woman who testified my client was at the scene really uh, is an unsavory witness, unreliable, unethical, and uh, not worthy of being relied upon. The court hears the murder is gruesome. Armstrong's bathroom is coated in blood. The 48-year-old man is found by a friend in the bathtub with a puncture wound through the neck. Police never find the murder weapon. The murder was committed with a knife. Now, when Wendy was asked on the stand to describe this knife, um, she said it was a three-meter knife, and she held up her hands. And I asked her to um, confirm for me, how big was that knife? And she said, well, three meters. And I said, so I held up actually a sheet of paper, and I said, okay, this is um, eight and a half by 11 inches um, long. How long was that knife, you know, compared to this? And, and again, she said three meters, which, um, which helped really put her evidence in context, it, um, it, almost childlike. I mean, there's mistakes and then there's not knowing how, what a meter is. So forensic evidence at the scene, um, they, they told us initially that the weapon was a, a knife. But you've never found the knife? Um, we found a knife that could possibly have been used, but, but we, there was no, not enough forensic evidence to link it directly to the, the murder weapon. But we believe we found a weapon that could have been used in it. But it wasn't the weapon. It, like, we don't know. We do, that's right. The, the forensic lab couldn't say 100 percent without a reasonable doubt that that was the weapon. Okay, because they, they found like no trace of anything on, on that's the knife. Correct. Okay. Despite not being the murder weapon, the judge allows the crown to present this knife to the jury. And then there's this, a bloody boot print on the floor of Armstrong's bathroom. Was it the footprint of the killer? We tried to find out exactly what the what manufacturer brand style we estimated the size I believe it was a men's size 10 or 11 whatever it was a large size footprint so we, we try and find exactly where it was made that type of thing but we were never able to follow up with no murder weapon no DNA fingerprints or information on the boot print the crown relies on Wendy Scott's testimony which was riddled with at least 50 inconsistencies and contradictions and at trial Scott admits to lying under oath. Ms. Ms. Scott's testimony was, uh, it was like a pinball machine. It seemed to go um, from one end to another. That did not match the evidence that did exist. Did not match where in fact uh, Mr. Casey died. Did not match the evidence of a size 11 or 12 men's boot print, bloody boot print did not match her description of what happened, her description of the area, her description of the individuals involved did not match. I went to the trial as I sat there all that week. I, I couldn't believe what I heard. As, as I sat there that whole week, I was trying to listen to what evidence did they have, and they didn't have any. Given the lack of evidence against her, Oak's defense team is confident the Crown's case will fail. On the advice of her lawyer, Oaks doesn't testify in her own defense. After the eight-day trial featuring 13 witnesses, Connie Oak's future is in the hands of 12 Medicine Hat jurors. Family and friends of Casey Armstrong burst into cheers, applause, and tears in a Medicine Hat courtroom this afternoon as a jury found Connie Oakes guilty of second-degree murder in his death. And when the jury came back in and they said guilty, I thought, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, my heart just dropped to, the, to my feet and I, I couldn't believe it. So as I walked out of there, I... I seen Connie and 
I looked at her and I, you know, I, I didn't I didn't know what to think. But I knew I knew for I knew that she did not do it. I actually thought that I was walking that day, but I don't know. I think I was just in in shock. I was in shock that that it came back guilty. Connie Oakes was sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole for 14 years in June 2014. There's again no doubt in my mind after watching the interviews and watching Wendy and knowing Wendy's capacity that Connie killed Casey Armstrong. I think the community is safer. Um, I think the process worked in this situation. When we come back, the heartbreaking tragedy that occurred to Connie Oakes as she sat in prison for a murder she didn't commit. While in prison, Connie Oakes gets the kind of news no mother wants to hear. Here is Jorge Barrera with part two of Quest for Innocence. Throughout the time that Connie was in custody, this sentence, um, um, it, it's, it was as though travesty and tragedy dogged her at every step. Her son became ill. Her son was ill, and he was dying. Before I got sick, it wasn't so bad. It was just, you know, she'll, she'll get out eventually, and I'll be around, and we'll do the things that we did last time. But now, I can't. can't do those things, even if she does get out. Do nothing. That's another why I want, reason why I wanted to go on this trip, because what if she does get out and I, I still can't do anything? before I could at least walk around and go places. Oh, I, can't, I can't sit in a vehicle for three hours. You wanted to go to Victoria? Yeah. To see the... Just to see something. I've never been to Victoria. Never even seen the ocean. Joseph marries his longtime sweetheart, Courtney, on May 16th of 2015. It was a Saturday. It was just me and him. He was able to stand up straight while we were exchanging rings. He almost looked like he was starting to cry, but he was he was holding it in. He, he's really an extremely strong man. and I think we were brought together for a reason. I haven't left Joe's side since he got cancer or anything like that. I just know he, he needed me, so there's nothing like Nothing in the world that could tear us apart or anything like that. Why, tell me why you decided to get married on on Saturday. Mm, I just don't... My, my illness, I don't know when, when it's supposed to. I don't think it will, but just in case it does, I'd like to get the not tired before then. So that's my main reason to do it. Just, uh, to be united as a one person. Joseph Carey's doctors give him just weeks to live. Oak supplies for appeal bail and escorted leave to see her son one last time. I, uh, I really had my hopes up for appeal bail. So I could go spend what little time that Joe did have. Uh, can I have a Kleenex? And uh, he actually uh, held out for for as long as as long as he could. Uh, he suffered lots. 
but um, he was, he said, I'm waiting for my mom to come home because they're supposed to bring her down to come and visit him. Uh, he was waiting for that. Then after found out she couldn't come. And I think that's when Joe just let go uh, to give up. On the basis of her behavior and her refusal to accept responsibility for her offense, they refused to allow her to go out and see her dying son. Her, her son died while she was in custody, wrongfully convicted. Joseph Carey dies in the early morning hours of May 23rd, 2015. It was a Saturday. I mean, we were only married for uh, exactly a week, <laughs> so I didn't get the whole marriage touchy-feely, you know, experience, but I'm still thankful for what I did get with him. <laughs> I just, I look at my boy, I see him lots in Joe. I see lots of him in Joe. And that's the hardest part. Seeing him grow up to become more like his dad. And he's not even around, but he's still slowly becoming like his father. And I'm thankful for that. I had made him a... Uh, uh, about a king size um, star blanket out of um, bl uh, light blue white camouflage uh, was actually the first one I've ever made um, I was denied access to go say goodbye to him uh, at the funeral so uh, one of the elders here She sat with me uh, on a Sunday, um, the the morning after uh, the wake. No, no, the day before the wake, and um, we had a ceremony with the blanket. Uh, I wrapped myself in it. Um, she conducted the ceremony, and then uh, we sent it off. My sister came, picked it up and took it in, uh, took it to him. I actually wanted him wrapped up in the blanket in, in the coffin, but she made it um, the day of the burial. Joseph's death leaves Oaks with one living son, Jared. Just keep strong, I guess, because that's what I pretty much do, just Try not to kill yourself. Stay strong. You just gotta wait and have patience. Wait and have patience. That's all I gotta say. Just gotta have patience. Yes, we need her bad. The boys need her. Baby Joe's gotta know her grandma, <laughs> you know. Never seen her. Then, an unexpected development. Wendy Scott begins to change her story after Oakes is sent to prison. She files an affidavit stating she did not believe that Oakes was at the trailer when the murder happened. And then, in October 2015, the Alberta Court of Appeal orders a new trial for Wendy Scott, setting the stage for Oakes' own appeal. The conviction being overturned in Wendy's case made it virtually impossible that Connie's was not going to be overturned. So it may seem obvious, but what do you want to see happen here? I want to see her set free. We all know that she, she didn't do it. On April 6th, the Court of Appeal of Alberta overturns Oak's conviction and orders a new trial. Then, two weeks later, this happens. I was just cleaning up in my house and whatnot, and all of a sudden, all the music stopped. There has been a major development in the Connie Oaks murder case. I almost fell to my knees. I was shocked. I had to sit down and have a smoke and process it again. It's like, did I just hear that? 
The Crown Prosecutor has requested a stay of proceedings in the new first-degree murder case against Oaks. Oaks was charged with the murder of Medicine Hat resident Casey Armstrong back in 2011. She was convicted on the charge, but a court of appeals overturned the decision on April 6th and ordered a new trial. The stay of proceedings means Oaks is now free to go. I always knew that I would, I would walk free one day, but I just didn't know how long it was going to take me to prove my innocence. Hi. <laughs> Give me a hug. made me stronger. I've, uh, I'm back on, back on, uh, onto my uh, spirituality, and that kept me sane. I guess I'm more calmer, more at, more at peace with that whole waiting process. Give it to the Creator, as our, our teachers tell us, right? I just want to sit at home while my mom's at work, have supper ready for her, have the house clean, maybe do what I need to do out here and run and get to know my grandson and let Jared know that I'm home. Huh? <laughs> hey, Nico, <sis. laughs> In all, Connie Oakes spent two and a half years in prison for a crime she didn't commit. Wendy Scott is still behind bars. Her new trial is set to begin in January 2017. In the meantime, Oakes will be following the proceedings from the family farm on the Nikonit First Nation. The Association of Elizabeth Fry Societies has called for a complete investigation into this case, from the police to the judiciary. Alberta's Justice Minister says it is premature to comment on anything. The Crown entered a stay of proceedings, meaning they can still go after Oaks for another year. Next week, Kathleen Martins has The Rock. She looks at the connection between moldy homes and the mental health of on reserve members and the skyrocketing suicide rates on some First Nations. I'm Todd Lamarant. Have a great evening. <laughs>